ओके सो यस्टरडे आई वॉज हैविंग ए डिस्कशन विद डॉक्टर चिराग मदान ऑफ इंटलेक्ट मेडिकोज इज ए गुड फ्रेंड ऑफ माइंड एंड आई वॉज जस्ट आस्किंग हिम दैट वेदर देर इज अ डिफरेंस इन द ए सी एल एस गाइडलाइंस विच यू फॉलो इन इंडिया इन अब्रॉड बिकॉज चिराग इज वेरी मच इन टू दिस यू के एग्जाम्स एंड ऑल मोस्टली वॉट एवर द एग्जाम्स ऑन द यू के पैटर्न आर अवेलेबल इन इंटेंसिव केयर ऑफ मेडिसिन ही यूज टू कोच पीपल ऑन दैट so i was just wondering whether in india we follow i think american one eh ones and is there any difference between uh, these two so chirag was very uh, helpful in that and he uh, narrated me few difference between the american and the uk one guidelines so i asked him uh, requested him can he have this small discussion regarding these differences for our channel so he was very helpful in that and i am thankful that he spared few minutes for us and now i will introduce chirag and he will tell you the difference between uh, a- acls guidelines of ah and uk welcome chirag thank you for sparing time with us and over thank to you, you so thank you so much sir for that and definitely it's my pleasure to be on your channel and discuss about the differences when we talk about the management of cardiac arrest Mm. So hi to everyone and uh, yes as rightly mentioned by Dr Anko that we had a word we were having a discussion and so I'll just go ahead first of all whenever there is a cardiac arrest we go with BLS right and that is common in both American guidelines which is, which is AHA American Heart Association on the other side what we are comparing are the UK guidelines which is under the name of UK research guidelines or resuscitation guide, guidelines it is called as UKRC now BLS is almost almost same you use the same pattern of CAB compression airway breathing you have the same rate same depth rate of 100 to 120 per minute depth of 5 to 6 cm which i know everybody is aware of right and because you are on IC channel right so that is the bare minimum the basic thing uh also both of them both the guidelines emphasizes on the cpr quality that there should be minimal interruption there should be good chest recoil and all those this effective depth and even if the causes the 4h and 40s 50s are also similar post rosc return of spontaneous care that is also same but now i'll just discuss about the major major differences first of all whenever patient is unresponsive right obviously and the first thing is you go ahead with all those sequence and then further you attach monitors to the patient either on the monitor there are two scenarios either it is a shockable rhythm or a non shockable rhythm in shockable rhythm what we have mainly are the ventricular fibrillation or maybe pulseless ventricular tachycardia now there is a major difference over here one thing in the aha they say there is a single shock advisable in all the settings whereas on the contrast in the uk rc uk guidelines so they say three uh, stacked shock or stacking of the shock is allowed if patient is in a area such as cath lab is monitored and there is a witnessed vf or pulseless vt so i'll just again say this this difference in aha single shock is advised in all the settings whereas in uk guideline they say three stack shock that means shock 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 in between you don't give any cpr you don't give any uh, any adrenaline nothing three stack shock only whenever it is witnessed and monitored right so like in the ICU, ha huh? so like in the icu you have a monitor uh, connected to the patient in in front of you you witness a pulseless vt or vf so there there you can give uh, three stack shock as per the uk guideline yeah. Yes. That's what you want. During the surgery, yes. During cath lab and ICUs, yes. Right. Whenever it is monitored and witnessed, you have seen by yourself. So mm-hmm. that is what means. And this is a major, major difference, I would say. Mm-hmm. The other thing is uh, about the next step. What is to be done after it? Obviously, what we do is in the AHA, which we practice in India also, is CPR. Then again, checking and in the after the second shock. whenever the, there is second shock we go ahead with epinephrine over here in aha whereas in under uk guidelines they say yeah. epinephrine or adrenaline to be given after the third shock and let me tell you uh, the another difference that word which is epinephrine whereas 
the UK guideline, they use adrenaline. I mean, both are similar, right? But yeah, that is, uh, I mean, <laughs> can, can you repeat? Uh, can you repeat that? Uh, yeah. uh, the sound quality uh, got disturbed in between. Okay, okay. The so, difference in the nomenclature. The, the term used in the AHA is epinephrine, whereas in the UK, they use the word adrenaline, which is the same. I mean, it, it's the same, just the term which is which they are using in the guidelines that's okay. it and yeah. also it's about the timing adrenaline to be given after second shock whereas in uk guidelines it is to be given after third shock okay so very commonly Dr. Ankur, we, we go ahead after the second shock right we give shock and then cpr then again shock and the next cycle we give adrenaline which is there in the ahn which we practice but in the uk it is after the third shock after the third shock Okay, so yes. nomenclature difference, three stock uh, uh, shocks, if it's a witness, VT and VF, then adrenaline timing, one is after the second shock and one is after the third shock. Anything about amidiron or something like that, we were yes. telling me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. The third major thing I would say, in the AHA they say, if still the rhythm is shockable, you can go ahead with, you should give an antiarrhythmic, which is amidiron. And recently, I mean, not recently, in uh, five years back in 2020, they updated that if amidiron is not available or it's not effective, so alternative to it is added in the guideline, which is lignocaine or lidocaine. That has been added in AHA. Mm -hmm. But UK guidelines doesn't recommend, doesn't use the word of lignocaine or lidocaine anymore. They have not even used it. So this is again a major difference. Mm. Anything about bradycardia? Yeah, uh, if we talk about the bradycardia, yes, obviously not in the cardiac arrest, but yeah, if it is a symptomatic bradycardia, if we are managing a patient in the EHA, uh, what they have updated recently is one milligram, right? One milligram of atropine in a symptomatic bradycardia, whereas UK guideline still is with 0.5 milligram. And Dr. Ankur, uh what i mean can you can you uh, let let us, we discuss this we uh, discuss this actually audience, to, the, uh, to the audience uh, if you can go to your icu and see the vials of atropine it's 0.6 mg so it's neither between uk and neither between h it's in between so that's that's a yes. funny difference true. which uh, you can understand so true, and one true, more true. thing just for the uh, sake is um, there are one in in pulmonary embolism if you are thrombolizing you need to continue cpr for a longer period of time I think it's in the yes. UK guidelines they have mentioned this. It should be 60 to 90 minutes. Yeah. So, uh, even if it's a confirmed case or a suspected pulmonary embolism, mm -hmm. what both of the guidelines say is you can consider, you can consider giving thrombolysis. Mm -hmm. And the uh, UK guidelines recommend more. Plus, UK guidelines have given a specified time, which is 60 to 90 minutes after. And they just strongly emphasize that that you can, you should go ahead for this prolonged time in the UK, not in the AHA. One more, one more, more is left, I would say, is about the shock. We have discussed about all, I mean, when to be given adrenaline or amidiron and all those things. One other difference I can say is about the shock. Hmm. The energy which is to be used under AHA and the guidelines of the AHA, what they say for a defibrillatory shock, it is 120 to 200 joules for a biphasic. Whereas in the UK, what they use the term, the, the, the energy levels, it is from 150 to 360 joules. And you should always start, usually start from 150 joule onwards. So this is again a difference about the energy. So these were just few differences which uh, we talked about, right? Uh, having the AHA and the UK guidelines. So what I will do is in the description of this video, I will post the links of both the guidelines so you can go through the algorithm and have a, uh, have a review of this what we discuss and have a better clarity. And one more point, yes. uh, because we are sitting with Chirag, who is a master of cracking exams, especially the UK, Europe ones. Uh, he teaches so mm -hmm. well that more than the cracking the exam, people are fond of his teaching per se, the way uh, he teaches. More, many of the students have seen that. Uh, just by uh, just for increasing their knowledge in medicine, they join his course on intellect medicos. So that's a different part. So what I would recommend is 
this is becomes very important that if you are cracking in an exam uh, like uk exam or european exam you need to answer the mcqs or question based on their guidelines nice guidelines uk guidelines you may be right in your country like in india or america you may have right click the right mcq but you feel that why it got wrong in, in that part of the world because they the reference point is different so all those who are uh, listening this you can this take this as an example also that whenever we are going to crack an exam we need to follow what protocols or what guidelines they ask in the exam it's a european exam or american exam in india usually we follow the american ones so i think chirag this makes sense yes true hmm. true exactly very rightly said uh, if let's say you want to work in the uk you wish to practice in the uk or in the europe obviously you need to be well versed with the guidelines or the other scenario can be you just have to write the exam let's say you want to crack uh, mrcp or any other exam in I mean, the plab exam also then yes you should know these differences because obviously your answer depends upon the guidelines not what you are practicing in your hospital or in your country so i think uh, this uh, guideline difference should I, with, uh, huh? should, huh? I, should i just enumerate should i enumerate all those points or you will write in the description box no yeah, 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 yes you can just uh, one two three four you can enumerate it will be helpful okay. to the uh, audience also. okay okay. Hmm. okay so the first uh, is let's say about we are talking about the cardiac arrest or in under aha it is acls under uk it is als now i'll again enumerate the points one is we talked about the shock single shock under aha whereas three stark shock whenever it is witnessed and monitored cardiac arrest and especially the shockable rhythm is there second about the adrenaline right adrenaline is the time uh, is to be given after second shock under aha whereas after third shock under uk guidelines third there is a uh, alternative of amiodarone in the aha which is lignocaine and there is no mention about lignocaine drug in uk guidelines in the cardiac arrest fourth about the energy to be used uh, in hv it is recommended as 120 to 200 biphasic joules whereas under the uk guidelines it is biphasic 150 to 360 joules and you start with 150 and fifth point is about thrombolysis uh, that yeah uh, even if it is suspected or a confirmed pulmonary embolism you should you should carry out cpr for 60 to 90 minute that is mainly emphasized in the uk guidelines not in the aha so these i would say these are the five and obviously one which i just mentioned is the just the name epinephrine and adrenaline epinephrine in the aha and adrenaline over here plus one dr ankur pointed out about the dose of atropine so these are five six differences i would say major differences in the uh, between these two guidelines so i i hope uh, this was helpful uh, to the audience who is listening that there are subtle changes in the guidelines which you should know when you are reading different guidelines and to where to quote which and also when you are cracking an exam follow the guideline which the exam follows you need to crack that exam and for just for the information in india we follow the ha ones so thank you dr yes. chirag uh, for sparing a uh, few minutes of your uh, very precious and busy schedule i know you are now a course director of pastes also you have a lot of work to do but thank you uh, for sparing time uh, for our audience thank you dr chirag and thank mm-hmm. you all for listening and i i would again say do read more about these guidelines thank you <laughs> thank, thank most you. welcome it's my thank pleasure you. to be here thank okay, you sir bye bye thank you bye bye